Alright, cool, sick. I'm not sick. That's that's uh expression of endearment, I believe. I think so. I don't know. Anyways, here we go. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. My name is Bando, and I hope you appreciate today because today is the 24th of January 2022. It is a Monday, like every single other stream day. Uh and uh yeah, no, today has been a wonderfully overcast looks like it's about to rain kind of day uh but it was a pretty good day it's pretty enjoyable uh the past week has also been pretty good and i'll discuss all about that today uh but how about you guys probably wanted to watch some wario land so let's uh jump right into the stream of wario land and we got some audio maybe but one day we'll get some video i've got the the <laughs> the demo running too much here we go and there we go, Warrior Land 2. So, in the last week, last stream, uh, I basically, I finished the game, and then I also did the uh, first little side route here, where Wario sleeps in, and then manages to wake up before Captain Syrup even has, like, hit, or has taken everything in this castle. Um, there's a few treasures still missing, that's okay. Uh, so how about, let's go through the route, and jump right into this level. So this is level 1-5. Uh, where we defeat the giant snake. Now we've- I've done this level before. But there's a secret exit. Do I know where the secret exit is? Uh, not particularly. So, we'll take a huge stab. Um, but it shouldn't be too confusing. Because I've played this level before. I think. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh... So yeah, how have you guys all been? Uh, I've I've had a pretty uh, non nonchalant. That sounds like people only use the word nonchalant when things are definitely chalant, when things are definitely going on. But for me, nah, legit, it's been really chill. Nothing's really happened too much. Uh, I've been paying attention to the news, uh, the tech news, not the. Not any other kind of drama news. I don't know where I'm going. Like, I know I played this level, what, three weeks ago? Wait, this is 1-5, so this is... Was that it? Or did I just exit the level? Alright, so we're not, we don't have to do any of this. So, yeah, what's that? Was that the secret exit? Just... That was the secret exit. There you go. I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm a genius. Anyways, Wario decides to just break his way through everything, somehow come to his treasure room? Sure. And then he's so upset he runs in the opposite direction. And, uh, manages to catch him in the act. Uh, which, oh, sorry, lands on the fast button. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't make note of that. Not into the pit, it burns! What's up? And then, uh, Wario goes down the pit. And away we go. So, go to the cellar. Defeat the giant spearman. Nothing screams a great start of a level like having to fall right away. Uh. Okay, fine. You asked for it. Bonk. Ugh. Ugh. That's, um... That's a bit of a weird room. Okay, sure. Uh, but yeah, no, this, uh... This past, uh, week has been, um... Fairly, uh... Stock standard, I believe. There's nothing really too fancy that's happened. But on the flip side, I also feel like... Ooh, that's a cool pathway. Um, I feel that's actually kind of... Is that a chain shot? There's been a, a, a few kind of... Things to, to note, to pay attention to. And, uh... Most importantly, to make fun of. Which is good fun. Uh, so let's start with the huge elephant in the room. Uh, the wonderful news item of, uh... Twitter! And the hexagon NFT profile pics that you can activate now. Uh, so if you own an NFT on OpenSea.com and you are the 
uh, only person on earth who is paying for uh, Twitter Blue, then you can uh, use or verify. I don't know what's the official term, but like you can effectively prove your ownership of an NFT and be able to use that on Twitter.com as a special hexagon picture. Uh, this has led to a couple of rather interesting developments. There is 100% a dark door in here. Maybe it's above me? Uh, this feels slightly more right, but I also feel like let's just turn on the lights. How about that's probably the better, the better avenue. Um, this is a kind of interesting room, isn't it? Uh... But yeah, no, Twitter is a website. I use Twitter, uh, half sparingly. Like, I, I do kind of follow people, but I don't legitimately, like, do conversations with that. And I've had plenty of conversations on here as to why I don't particularly use Twitter. But Twitter is a site that, uh, has one kind of core feature and has a bunch of things that don't particularly add to the core feature, but they keep trying them anyways. This one is particularly to encourage people to use Twitter Blue, a subscription service that allows you to not edit your old messages, that's not a feature yet. Um, I'm gonna watch over Donkey Kong here. I'm actually curious, what's above me? Yeah, I was like, this room goes up. Only thing is, uh, <laughs> gotta take your time not going up. Uh, yeah, I actually, I don't particularly know the feature set of Twitter Blue. Um, all I know is that I think it's got, like, it's ad free, I think. Oh, what's down here? Oh yeah, that was just exactly where I was before. Uh, I think it's ad free. Um... I wanted to say scheduling tweets was a... an exclusive feature, but... I don't think it actually is. I think... I don't know, actually. You can just use tweet deck as well, like, if you really wanted to. Um... Whoa... Whoa... Oh my goodness. We made this corridor. Can I at least hit the... Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Um... Yeah, but anyway, so, yeah, if you own an NFT on OpenSea.com, you can indeed register it. And I I just said the same thing over and over again without really providing comments. So, what are my thoughts on NFTs? Well, NFTs, I, I probably have the controversial take of, I don't think they're, like, 100% useless, but it's, uh, like, they're definitely 95% misused. That, like, NFTs, and, and I guess all kind of blockchain tech, it has one particular purpose. And that's, if you're the kind of guy who wants to distribute a database. If you want a database that uh, is not necessarily, like, one object and will eventually correct itself to be all good, then blockchain is great. If you're the kind of guy who wants efficiency, Blockchain is not at all what you should be using, because the whole point of blockchain is that eventually things get processed. Some guy believes that there's a transaction, he tells his friends that the transaction happened. His friends then, I, this is the end level. Okay, let's back out a little bit, because um, I haven't got the, the treasure yet, and I kind of want to get it. Um, like, yeah, yeah, block, blockchain is all about, like, a guy telling, you know, everyone else... What's going on? Also, I hope that this is the same room layout, where it's like it goes here, and then... Did it really crash on me, like, in the first, like, eight seconds? It did! Wow! Uh, wow! This is a horrendous stream. Okay, for reference, for reference, the last stream ended because of a wonderful crash, and I hope you're gonna appreciate that the, uh... Hold on, I'm actually gonna, like, cut out, because you got the, uh... You got the... The gosh darn heckin' Retromark stuff coming up. Wow, okay. Yeah, um, mmm, professional stream. And also professionally restarting my progress mildly. Cool. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's go quick. Let's go real quick. Um, like this saved. But also just like, man, I gotta do the level again. Um, yeah, so 
Uh, how about, let me just bring that one up. Um, at the end of the last stream, uh, Retroarch crashed. Uh, I look it up and it's because of a, uh, the game got a OX C005 exception. That is, that screams out to me as a, like, thing is unauthorized to do a change. Uh, to do an action. And so I'm like, okay, what was that action? I don't know. Logs don't really tell you. Um, so I was thinking, oh, well, it's usually graphics. Usually graphics. That's, that's usually where it's at. It's one of those. So I reinstall my graphics. And I've not, I've not had that issue, despite me playing on RetroArch, uh, before. Like, before today. I've been playing it all week, I'm gonna describe a game that I've been playing. Um, I've been guessing. I'm glad that worked out. Um, and then, nah, yeah, cool, nine minutes in, I'm gonna, I'm even gonna open up Event Viewer on my end. I wanna really see exactly what this error is, so that if you there, at home, uh, understand what is going on with a uh, retroarch here and or my crazy configuration of something. I'm gonna go to my application and I'm gonna see error, application error, faulting application name, retroarch, exception code OXC0000005. Uh, faulting process ID is just that, uh, and then other than that, faulting program retroarch, and that's it. It doesn't describe it in any more detail. There may be something in Retroarch's own output logs, if I... Uh... I don't know if I've actually got it logging. It might not. Uh... But still, it's just like... I... I don't know what's going on there. That's gonna get very obnoxious if it comes up in the middle of, uh... The... What's the level? You know what I mean. Because there's a, there's a super bonus end game level. And that one's going to be an absolute pain if this happens in it. But also on top of that, people, especially you at home watching this, uh, probably don't want to see that ever, actually. You don't want to see, uh, here's a guy who's obviously playing on an emulator because his game crashes. That's, that's not professional at all. I, I used to, like, make it, well... What? How do I? How do I say? It? Like I, 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 it used to be loud and clear that I was using an emulator before. Then I tried my best to. I realized I don't have the blur on as well. Hold on. Even worse. Oh. Hold on. Back to the ambition. Ah, jeez. I. Wow. This is professional tech. Yeah, someone's gonna like yell at me because I don't have the um in the frame blinding on. Oh. May I just say I absolutely love the port screen. Yeah, sorry, my bad. I didn't have the Game Boy style blurring, so I had like weird flickering going on. Not weird flickering, but like the intended flickering. So for reference, I think going in here. Oh boy. Man, I guess. <laughs> My brain's just like, oh, start it again. You're goofing it up, but nah. Uh, oh. I think the trick is to come in here with the, uh, the light on. So just know that the door is right in the middle there, and then flip the switch. Because the door seems to alternate between the, um, well, uh, here we go, so. Alright, NFTs, uh, yeah, they're inefficient, um, in doing stuff, but, uh, they have a purpose, but yeah, most people, it's not great. One thing I actually think NFTs have a good purpose for doing is doing things that are for non-digital things, like tracking, uh, stuff like a bank transaction, for example. That's actually a good way of, uh, something, of course, you know, managed by the bank, but in general it's just like, hey, like, you know, you've got devices making transactions all over the place. It makes sense, and especially, yeah, it makes sense when people are making transactions independent of some system. Um, like, I want to buy something and I don't want every single person I have to know, uh, I hope that's the top left. Uh, I don't want every single person to have to confirm that I can buy something. I want to kind of 
like, go, oh, okay, my immediate neighbors acknowledge that. And then go with that. Maybe there's, I've not worked specifically with blockchain, so maybe there's stuff that I don't quite know about it. There's a lot of magic that happens under the hood with blockchains as well. And I am really unaware of what's going on there. But can I jump on that? I guess I could just go in. Because the level just ends over here. It's easy when you know where to go. Nothing screams, I want to finish a level in no time flat, like having to ground pound this guy. Ooh. Bonk. 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 Easy money. Top shelf. Cool. Alright, well, that's a level done. Let's play the game. Uh... But anyway, yeah, Twitter is letting you do that. We'll just we'll just say that you're you're able to. Uh, this is a three. This is a five or a three or five. Three or five. Uh, that is three, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what? I I keep like starting on the story and then I'm going like, what is actually my opinion on this? I think mostly, it doesn't really matter, it's not really going to convince me to buy Twitter Blue, and most importantly, uh, it kind of targets people. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, people have been making fun of NFT owners for a while, like anyone with a Bored Apes, uh, is that the name of the, the collection? Anyone with like that collection of NFT and uses it like unironically, I'm just like, that is a can of worms. like. That NFT collection. I think it's because it's just like it's one of the most like clear ones of just like like this is a very kind of copy paste kind of set. Um, but I mean, there it is, and I'm gonna need an enemy that won't get crushed by the rolling rocks. Ooh. Maybe, oh, maybe you can get the bit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but they break immediately. At least it alternates. Alright, this is gonna be an interesting one. I love the music in this game, may I just note as well. It's just all full of like... Like, quarter tones. I think it'd be easier to get the... Oh. Oh. Ah. There we go. Um. So, yeah. Uh, problem number two uh, of NFTs on Twitter. Uh, you can easily register your own image on OpenSea because Twitter doesn't force it to be part of a collection in order to be put on the site. They just let you put any registered NFT on the site. So you can just... Well, sorry, yeah, pretty much any NFT that's an image. Just, sure, okay. Uh, so yeah, that means if you want, upload your own image to OpenSea. And then people can, one, steal it. Uh, and two, um, put the, uh, put it as a Twitter icon with the hexagon border. And three, the hexagon border is smaller than the round image. Maybe actually it might not be, but it's like, it's so close. And people realize that uh, if you upload a Twitter image, a Twitter avatar of uh, specifically the resolution 400 by 400, Twitter supports transparency. Why? I don't know. It just does. Why not? Uh, so what people have been doing is uploading images with the transparency, with the 400 by 400 and having the hexagon border on part of their regular image. Uh, it's kind of hilarious. Um, but it, it kind of begs the point. It's like, why? Who asked for this feature? Why do people want this feature? And what stops you from just uploading an image to Twitter? They want some verification thing, I guess? But, I mean, you could just, you know, 
copyright, I guess, your image. I, well, nothing really stops anyone from stealing that, but still. Oh, there's still a bit left. Oh. Oh, rock. It's that one bat. Oh, okay, I guess he's going. Oh. So, eh, it's, a, it's a weird kerfuffle of things. Um, and ultimately, it really doesn't paint NFTs in a good light. NFTs can be used for some good. Some good. And, and blockchain in general. But, like, some good. And I think everyone, especially us, us gamers, you and me, I know you're a gamer, you're watching this, you're not just, like, some random fella. You're a gamer. And you know it. Um. Cool. Um. Uh. What we really want is a new graphics card. Which is a beautiful segue, if I say so myself, to, uh, story number two. The AMD 6500 XT? Uh, it's, got, it's, it's got XT at the end of the name. I realized there's a Intel, sorry, there's a, there's an NVIDIA GPU named the 6500 XT. From ages ago, this was back when the, uh, 6000 generation was the thing. Oh, that's, that's the end of the level. Again, I'm missing the, the goods. So there might be some goods down here, but... Let's see, I was rolling, 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 rolling. Okay, I, I guess I'm just gonna figure out how to jump at that point. That's probably where it is. Um... So the 6500 XT is a graphics card that I mentioned on... Oh... Oh... The rocks don't flatten you, do they? Like, this looks like it just hurts you. Oh, it does flatten you! Ah, oh, okay. This is exactly what I need. I was wondering, it's like, why do they got the bats in particular? So I want to be flat, because then, when I'm walking through here, I don't fall down these, these cracks. And therefore, I can continue on going, and then water is the cure, apparently. I hope it's not just for money. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, 6500 XT came out and it's... Uh, trash? To put it lightly? I'm, and this is, this is me as a, as a 100% fanboy, but you know what I mean, it's like... Here's a product that just, like, isn't. It, it's like, I looked at the specs and I said, I don't know if it's going to be that great. I didn't realize a couple of things, particularly uh, it, um, it was based on a mobile chip. And therefore, I think that there's a... Not, not that there's, a, like, an issue with that. But that, that, that's probably a sign that it doesn't have really much grunt or, uh, or beef. Um... And then I look at the, the rest of the things and I go, oh, it's only got four gigs of VRAM. I think four gigs of VRAM is still okay. It's not amazing if you're wanting to push into higher resolutions, but I think four gigs, if you're still going to rock 1080p and you're going to rock 1080p for a while, sure, it's not the worst, but then what, yeah, what kind of couples on with everything? I'm kind of backtracking through the level just to find the thing. I was like, hmm, this. Camera's panning over. But usually they don't put the, uh... Usually they don't put the goods behind a, a door like that. Or, or a tunnel like this. Um... So there must be some other goodies. Oh, yeah. Uh... So it's not just that, but it's... It's the slower memory, and this is by a slower memory bus. And I didn't really, like, I didn't even look into this at the time. It's got a 64-bit memory bus. That means, uh, something. I don't, <laughs> I actually don't know what particularly the memory bus is, but uh, as a product, the overall memory bandwidth is a product of the, uh, the clock speed of the memory, the type of memory, and the width of the bus. So by having a narrower bus, you immediately doom the card somewhat. Um, 
and especially a 64-bit bus, I looked it up. There are only about five NVIDIA GPUs released in the last 10 years that have a 64-bit memory bus. Uh, they're... The only other... They're all like the 1030 and the, and the 710. Like, they're all low-end cards. Um... Like, and especially stuff that's not advertised for gamers, and stuff that has stripped features out of it. Uh, but also run for incredibly cheap. Uh, I am back at the beginning of the level. So the only thing I can think of is that there's something way off to the left, and or this way. Uh, the only way I can get over there is by roll, but like, that's... Yeah, you see what I mean? It's like, it's a little bit out of the way. Maybe I could bounce? Ah, it's a little bit too up there. I, I, I'm a little bit at a loss. It must be further on. They they don't usually put the treasure like earlier on, but uh, but yeah, no, there's there's just there's so many weird like stripped features out of this card, and in turn, and it costs like they're charging two hundred US dollars. They're charging just as much as. Um, I guess like, like the 1060 and the RX 580, I think, at its time. And in the benchmarks, it performs just as well as the 580. And the 580 came out in 2019? The 1060 came out in 20, uh, 2016. The 580 must be an older. But yeah, no, so the, um... There's something over here. Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh, it was not a wall. Ah, jeez. Okay. Um... Yeah, there's so many weird strip features. So you as a buyer... What are you getting out of this card? Well, one, you're getting a card with lower memory bandwidth. That is the clear thing. Uh, what does lower memory bandwidth mean to an end user? Well, it means that when the uh, when the game requires more memory, the sorry, when when the game requires more memory in a short amount of time, the bandwidth starts to be a problem. It starts to be a bottleneck for things like uh, textures need to be transferred across the card, um, models. Uh, Shaders, sometimes, shaders not really. Shaders don't take up that much space on the card. But it's definitely like, you know, there's only so much memory. There's only so many things that the card is able to hold on at any one time. Um, and on top of that, I guess the memory bandwidth is specifically working within the memory. So if something is a bit intensive going between it, i.e. a higher resolution game, where you have a frame buffer on the card and you need to do more stuff in the same frame rate, maybe, uh, that starts to become a bit of a problem. Uh, on top of that, the PCIe uh, four lanes thing means there's a limited amount of bandwidth between the card and the computer. And that just doesn't help either. Uh, is that a six or a... Could be a six. I'm going with six, yeah. I think I just burned a ton of money on that one, whoops. Wow, it's a piece of paper. There we go. I'll say I didn't keep the power on. Go to the cellar, stop that train! That's right, there's a train level? No game is great without two train levels. 
it's a different background, so I guess it is a different train level, even though it's uh, probably going to be a bit similar. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's just it's lacking all these features, and it comes out, and it's the same price as cards that came out years ago, but have all been scouts because the market is absolutely trash. What do we do as a market? We crash crypto. We we take Bitcoin and we drop it by ten thousand Australian dollars. We take Ethereum, we drop it down by one thousand Australian dollars, and uh, well, that's exactly what happened, although not at all for the same reasons. So hopefully, if some people sell out of crypto and go, hey, I'm going to give my graphics card to the friendly gamer next door, that'd be cool. And hopefully that happens. But until then, uh, it's a it's a big it's a big bummer. I keep mentioning. Uh, technology and, and stuff like that. And while things have kind of settled in other parts of, of computer hardware, um, graphics cards are just the one, like, not sacred spot. They're just constantly getting, uh, oh. I'm worried how much, uh, ooh, if I fall too far over. Oh, that's the end of it. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, so... That's a bit of a big shame. Uh... The, the mild good news is still, of course, software is still being written that's not, like, ruling out the new cards. That is the worst thing for RTX. That is the worst thing when NVIDIA is like, here, buy our new graphics cards and the availability is just not there. People are buying 1060s. People are buying... Um, like, NVIDIA doesn't like that, um, now granted, NVIDIA would also release a new 2060 with, technically it's more specs, uh, compared to the regular 2060, I think in every way, except I th think there's one bit where it, it's, uh, slower on paper, um, I don't know what, what it specifically was. But, yeah, it's, a uh, it's a new product, it's a new SKU, technically, and it's like, oh, okay, but, again, have you seen one out in the wild? It's always tough to talk about this kind of stuff as well. Um, and especially, like, all these tech YouTubers who review all these cards, they probably still get all the views that they've got, but I don't know if people buy those anymore. Um, at least on a regular basis, and, and especially, I know people who are like, oh, they'll buy it graphics card, and then it's just like, they're spending like 2,000 on a graphics card, it's like, I spent 1,000 on mine before all this happened. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want it to go any higher. Well, I mean, it's naturally gonna go higher because inflation, but... Uh, I can't jump that high, so, no, nope, we're going back out. Uh, <laughs> falling back into the hole, it's always pain. Uh... So yeah, hopefully things get better. We're looking for 2021, 2022. Yeah, it's gonna get better. Uh, there's something so like painfully dismal that like you can treat the new year. You can just be like, oh, things are not gonna get better. Um, I guess it's easy to fall into that boat, but who knows? I mean, <laughs> how do I phrase it? How do I phrase it? I think there's there's a chance for optimism. There's a chance for something good to happen. Um, I don't really know what's the signs. I don't really know what's the signs of something good happening. Um, at least, let's say, in terms of uh, stuff like that. All I can say is, keep mocking crypto people. That's all I can say. Um, I know there's, like, big money on it as well, but it's, like, it it's hard for me to fathom. Just because, like, it is so intangible. It's, like, you're, like, well, the, the easiest thing I, I can think of is, who says that if you got every single Bitcoin in the world, that is worth a trillion dollars? Like, I mean, the, the market cap is obviously not the real cap. The real cap is so much under it. It's purely just, oh, I trade you this, and 
we kind of agree that if you want to buy some, it will have to be for this price. Look at this enemy. Look at him, he's so cute. I probably gotta throw a dude at him. Done. Um. So like, a trillion dollars? A trillion Australian dollars to collect all the Bitcoin in the world and put it all in one place? Uh, I still scratch my head on that one. Ooh, that's a sound. We got the moon even as well, that's how you know, it's good. Yeah. So, anyway, Dismal, we keep talking about graphics cards not being able to afford them. Oh, it gets a bit tiring. Uh, five? Could be five? Could be five? I'm locking in. I think it's five, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, well, the well, world's a bit crazy, but, eh, it'll get there eventually, it'll get there. I feel like I said that in, like, my very, very first stream that I did, like, the end of 2020, like, November, and I was just, like, playing Cruise in USA, and it's like, ah, things will get better, and, uh, well, they got better in other bits. Oh, they baited me, they baited me, and you know what's the best part? There's a platform here, right at the beginning. Fat Warrior's gonna walk it off! There you go. And he had all this money down here, so... It was a bit more worth it. Gotta watch out for more food, though, I don't... Oh, I actually... I actually need more food now. Bonk! Oh, he's too fat to fit in the, fit between the blocks. Wario, what are you doing? Ah, oh, poor Wario. Poor Wario. Ah. Uh, so let's talk about some good news. Let's talk about a couple of games I played. Actually, let's talk about some bad news. Let's talk about the first game I played. I really? There was a guy there. Oh boy. Oh boy. So. Uh, how about let me discuss the, uh, elephant in the room, which was I played Batman Arkham Knight last week, and I actually didn't even mention, uh, the bits I didn't really like about it, mostly because I finished the game now. I, I sat down and I was like, I'm playing the DLC, and I beat the DLC in one singular day. All six little DLC campaigns, um, and let, let me, let me describe... What's going on here? Actually, that leads into an interesting news story as well, so... Um... So... Uh... First of all... I think the game is still... It's still pretty good. It's... It does a lot of nice things in the open world that I do really appreciate. It's nice and smooth. Um... Like, you don't get taken out of the experience. Like, you don't get, like, fades or, you know, things where, like, Oh, I'm in an instance room. It's like you walk into a building. And the build and the game keeps going. It doesn't wait. It just goes, hey, here's the building. And it's like, that's great. Open world games need to keep doing this. GTA 4 did it. I know, GTA 4. But GTA 4 also, when you walked into a mission, the screen faded to black. There's something nice about how GTA uh, 5 does it, where just the cutscene just happens. No cuts to black. Just, just, just give me the goods. It's great. Um, so it's nice to, to see another game do it. Um, on top of that, I can. Uh, oh, I'm gonna need the fat. This is gonna be a very intro. Ooh. Did I want him here or? Oh, I think I can actually make that jump. Oh. Look at that. That was a legendary jump. Um. So yeah, but the bits I didn't quite like about it, there was a fair bit of nothing going on. There was a fair bit of I'm flying to destination. And actually one of the things I really didn't like is that the story put itself on hold a bit too many times. It was basically like, yo, Catwoman's in trouble. From the Riddler, you gotta you gotta help her. And they didn't I don't have the money for this. I have the money to do it on hard. I don't have the money to do it like now. I pressed up again. Nice. Um So I got a little bit irritated by that. Um but another thing I also got irritated about was that reliance on side content. The actual main story may not be 
that long. It, it feels like there's a fair bit of content. But it also feels like maybe there's a little bit of mm, the padding out. Uh, trying to make, uh, give me a bit of, like, extra time I'm spending on the, on the game, uh, in places. Like, I'm flying around, I gotta take out the same, like, kind of outposts, uh, multiple times. The encounters in the outposts are different. Uh, oh, oh, oh. But it's just like, okay, well, here's, here's an outpost, here's a, another tank mission, here's another AR mission where I just fight the same people. All of them, um, there was one side quest and I forgot what the guy's name was. Ezreal? I'm gonna say Ezreal. He looks like the Assassin's Creed guy, because I don't know my Batman lore. But anyways, he, uh, his side missions all involve uh, you trying to train him up and then, uh, and effectively how that goes in gameplay is he's, um, uh, ooh, can I go back up? Down to, there we go. Um, he, Batman effectively, like, visits him, and then he tells him to do an AR training scenario. Um, and then you beat up a bunch of guys, and that's the mission. And you do that three, four times? Sure. Uh, the Man-Bat missions, uh, Man-Bat is flying around. Tackle him three times, and he, he's done. Firefly, same deal. He's just chilling around, you just fight him three times. Uh, there's a, there's a bunch of these side missions which don't have a ton of meat on them. The one that did have meat on it was the Riddler, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a mild spoiler on this one. Uh, what ended up happening is that you do, uh, so you get called to, to visit this one place, Catwoman's there, and, uh, the Riddler has her locked up. You do some neat little kind of co-op-y puzzles. They're not quite co-op, because you sw keep switching between the two. But they've also got their own abilities. Uh, they get told different things in some spots, and it's, you know, you gotta do some neat little puzzles. On top of that, then the Riddler sometimes then goes, Hey, Batman, bugger off, drive to this place, and then do a race challenge. Uh, or just another puzzle, and then come back to this place, and you gotta do a puzzle here. Cool. Okay, sure, there's a lot of stuff to it. You get to the end, and the Riddler has a boss fight. Cool, okay. And then the moment the Riddler is about to be able to get hit, he leaves. He goes, he just goes, see ya, and he leaves. And he goes, if you want the honor of fighting me, you have to collect all 243 Riddler trophies. Scattered around the world, and I, I don't know all of them are trophies, some of them are just... Like, here's a, here's a riddle, here's you breaking a thing lots of times. I don't know why that's, like... Am I about to, like, butcher my way into... Into, like, beating the level? Because, like, I don't know where I'm going if I'm standing there. I think I need to hit a switch over here. So. There we go. Oh. This area looks familiar. This area looks really familiar. Um. Okay. I think I gotta hit a switch maybe over here. Um. So, what did I do as, as a natural person? I did it! I, I picked up all 243 of the Riddler stuff. And you wanna know what the fight was? The moment I was able to hit him just then, uh, it goes into a scripted sequence. Of, like, just, you're beating him up a little bit. And then, the, that first phase of the fight that I, it briefly teased me with, just did it again two more times. That was the fight. I was deeply disappointed by that boss fight. Um, Deathstroke shows up in the post game. Just kind of reuses a tank fight from the regular game, uh, which also shows up in the AR missions. It's like uh, it, it kind of it lets me down in various ways. I think it's satisfying, but it's also like it might be the weakest of the three. Um, we're going six or five, six or five, six or five, six or five. We're going five. Uh, yeah, we're going five. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it, it might legitimately be the weakest of the three games. Um, so I got a little bit let down by that. Um, so that, I, okay, also while I'm at it, the game has a handful of little DLC uh, 
most wanted missions as integrated as part of the game. The game does a decent job of integrating those. I don't, I think like, you know, they have as much meat on them as some of the actual uh, side missions. Um, so I don't think it's done poorly. Uh, and they, they're pretty organic. It's like, oh, a character's like off over here or sometimes, sometimes it's an actual like new area of the map. Um, I think I've actually got to be a zombie to take those guys out. Zombie! 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 Uh, I see that I can probably jump below me, but I kind of want to take him out. Ah. Is this not a floor I can jump through? Hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, so... Yeah, they, they were alright. Uh, a couple of them involved wandering around the map, like, just for things. I think the Mr. Freeze one was like, you go to a new area, you beat up a bunch of people, um, in like one stealth, like, kind of scenario. And then, uh... You talk to Mr. Freeze, and then he asks you to take out some other people in a stealth encounter just in the city. And then you drive the car. And that's the whole thing. That's all I can remember out of it. Maybe there was something else. Oh, uh, maybe you do two scenarios. Because I remember you went to a place and then you had to, like, ask a guy who then told you where Mr. Freeze's wife was. Uh, it's just like... Yeah, that that's what I mean. Is it like... Story contextually, like... Really, it's just like, how long does it take Batman to get to where he needs to go? That seems to just be the problem of the, the game. Batman takes forever to get what he needs to get done. Um, so, uh, yeah, got a bit tiring. Got a bit tiring the game, so. So, let's have uh, an additional set of DLC missions. Now, there's two DLC packs. Uh, me as an Australian, it costs $28.95 to buy uh, the Deluxe Edition. It also cost me $28.95 to buy the game itself. Just Let's let the record be straight on that one. Um, the DLC comes in two parts. It came in those extra most wanted missions. That's fourteen and a half dollars. It's half the pack. Um, and then it came with uh, the other half, which were these little, I guess, side stories. I'll just call it that. They're available in the main menu. Three of them take place before the events of Arkham uh, Knight. And three of them take place after. Uh, the first one, you play as Harley Quinn in her only uh, playable uh, scenario. Harley Quinn is okay. Uh, her gameplay basically revolved around you can't kill any... Sorry, you can't stealth. You're Harley Quinn. You're not subtle. So you end up just killing people. And it's it's it was an interesting, um, I guess, gameplay idea of... Yeah, you can't kill people, so when you're stealthing, you just go around and you slap people. And there's actually, there's one of the side quests in the actual game is all about, um, like, uh, what is it, like Two Faces guys are robbing a bank, and the alarm's going off, and it doesn't matter, like, being loud, because they can't hear you over the alarm. I swear, I, I should be able to jump here. I, I, it makes it really look like there's something underneath there, but... That's really strange, so... Oh. oh, this is... this is a real awkward situation. Does I just want to go left? I guess I'm going to go right. Oh my gosh, I picked up a hundred things, and now I've just like, casually locked myself. Wow, I think I've actually... I think I've actually locked myself out. I think I've actually locked myself out, I'm gonna restart this level. Wow, that's atrocious. That is atrocious. That is atrocious. I hope you, you saw that, it's like, without the zombie, I can't get past those guys. I need the zombie to get past them. And my favorite part is that, like, that is the beginning of the level. But it's just, oh, it's just the fact that, like, I'm, I'm wandering around too much, so. Oh, jeez. Um, 
So, okay, there's that. I then finished it in 15 minutes. I finished the Harley Quinn DLC in 15 minutes. So I was like, oh. Eh. I, I got very confused. Uh, so I was like, oh, maybe maybe it was like a pre-order bonus. It, it's something short, something sweet. Um, I should have gone to that door. That's, that's the door I'm going into. Something short and sweet. Okay, sure. The next DLC you play as, um, was it Red Hood? I think that's his name. Um, Red Hood is like Batman, except he uses guns and just kills people. And this is actually, this led into a kind of hilarious a little gameplay scenario where, um, Red Hood, yeah, instead of the bat claws or whatever, he has a gun. He just shoots the guy if you're aiming at him. It's kind of, it is kind of funny. It wears off a little bit. I then do, like, a combat scenario, a stealth scenario, and a combat scenario, and then after 15 minutes, he wins. Red Hood wins. The DLC is over. I, I go home. I'm like, okay. That's a bit weird. That's two in a row now, where the DLC has been very short. Open up DLC number three. This is the Batgirl DLC. You play as Batgirl, and she's almost like Batman, but has a very stripped down feature set, and actually plays exactly like Batman. There's nothing really to it. Um, uh, but, hey, it's an actual DLC. By the way, all of these take place in a, like, at least a map or a level that's not used in the rest of the game. So it is something new. But, uh, you know, it's a bunch of corridors, pretty much. And then, like, here's an open stealth room. But, you know, you've already... <laughs> there's not really any content to it if, uh... This is an interesting room. Um, so sure. Uh, the Batgirl one takes place on an island. And uh, a, like an amusement park island. It's got like an underneath area. It's got um, a couple of things. But it's like, it's a legitimately like, there's content in a DLC. I'll just put it like that. It took me an hour and uh, it did have some little, some little side goodies which were rather easy to find. But it's like, you know what? Like, it's something. It's something, so, sure, okay. Also, I guess, um, the villain of this one was, uh, the Joker, and he got a little bit of a moment. Just a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit. Um, so, but there wasn't really too much, uh, beyond she can hack some real contextual things and then go for it, so, okay, sure. But anyway, that's the, that's the three DLCs that take place in the past. Then there's three DLCs that take place after the game set. Uh... These were, uh, in order, you started off by playing one, where you, uh, play as... Oh, who was the first one? I think it was... The Catwoman one. Um... The Catwoman one... was hilariously rough. You start off by doing a sneaking around area as Catwoman. Catwoman, by the way, as I mentioned, is playable in the game in a very brief moment. Not, not well, not a very brief moment, but like during just a handful of like Riddler um, scenarios in the game, Catwoman is playable. Um, she can jump to the ceiling in stealth. This comes up a couple of times in the story. That's it. In the in the optional side story. Uh, so you sneak around, you beat up some people, and then Catwoman is like, "Yo, I'm going to now fight robots, Riddler robots." That's right. It's still the Riddler, apparently. Um, this one's gonna be a fun one to, to get. Am I just gonna fall through and just like grab like one coin? Two coins. Okay. Cool. And then he doesn't respawn over here, so I can just jump my way back up. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it was over in 15 minutes. And also, I'm playing as a character who I played as already. Uh, so I'm not really gaining much out of this one. Um, okay. The next one, you played as Nightwing, who shows up in the game when you're fighting Penguin. That's it. it you play as Nightwing, you beat up Penguin a bit. And that's it. Cool. Um, well, not Penguin, you, you beat up his goons because Penguin doesn't really fight, I know. Um... And then the last one, 15 minutes by the way again, you play as, uh... Robin? 
There's like three Robins. The game really doesn't... <laughs> I get confused. I get confused. So you play as Robin and you beat up Two-Face. And then that's it. 15 minutes. So, did you count? One of those DLCs took an hour. The other five took 15 minutes each. Uh, that is, with all its replayability out of the way, I assume these were on, these might have been on the same difficulty as my save. They might have not. I'm not too sure. Um, but what I can say is that was 14 and a half dollars that took me two and a half hours. Oh, hi there. This one's a boss. Hi. Oh, he's charging. Oh. I, wanna, I wanna get him while he's charging. Oh. There you go. Easy boss. Nah, he's back for more. Oh, he baited me out. Oh, he's down for the count. Okay, cool. Now I'm angry. Is he gonna trick me? Oh. That was a bit of an easy boss, to be honest. Okay, cool. Well, that was a boss. Let's play the numbers game yet again. Can I count to ten? Not really. <laughs> uh, so I, I got sorely disappointed by that DLC. The only remaining things, I uh, I assume what you get out of this is, uh, is that zero? Yep, okay, cool. You can't tell that zero ahead until that very last middle one. Um, I assume what I get out of this is that I can play each of the challenge maps as each of these characters, but ultimately, here I was, and you get like a fair bit of chocker block base game material. There's a lot of content, takes a bit longer than I'd expect, it took me about maybe like 32 hours total. It took a little longer than I really wanted to, but you know, in general, it's okay. Uh, by the way, there's... How many levels left? There's... 15, I think. So let's start another set of levels, and then I might, uh, pad out a bit of the stream time by, uh... Picking up some of the, the little loose goodies we've got. So, this is a level that we've played already. But there's a little bit of a secret exit. Let's get in the hole! Uh, and then ultimately, yeah, that's 14 and a half bucks, and on top of that, the remaining DLCs as part of the actual game... I, I don't feel like they really took me that long. Um, so in turn, I feel not ripped off, but I feel like remarkably disappointed by this DLC, which is... Yeah, it's not a great feeling. So my, my opinions of the game went from, oh, it's, it's, it's pretty fine, to... Eh. Because you feel like you're missing out. I, I'm terrible when it comes to DLCs. I, I'm like, oh, I'm missing this DLC. Oh, I'm missing out. And there's a handful of times when the DLC is bad. It's, it's, it's not good. Let's just pause through. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. Exactly, I'm looking for a secret exit, so this doesn't feel that secret to me. Hmm. I was gonna say as well, do I have, um... Oh, I was gonna say, do I have the treasure? I don't think you can really tell by the screen. It's not easy at all. Um... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It was a bit disappointing. Uh, so... Yeah, that's all I can really say. Uh, other than... The game's fine. But I don't think it's gonna be that easy for me to stream, or to really... Well, never mind also the, uh... Music copyright claims. In all the time.
Ah, this is this is maybe what I'm looking for. It's like here's a room. I want to chuck this guy up. Oh, that's a. There you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, that's all I can really say. Um, I wonder if that's like an enemy block. That's big, so... Oh! Eh! No. why they put the, uh... Like a wall like that? There's a car in the back. Yeah. Maybe that's an enemy wall. Hey, there you go. Yeah, there we go. That one that one's a bit obscure, I'm not gonna lie. Uh I think I got the missing like bit there. Okay, this looks like I gotta come around the other way. Uh, yeah. So, this this half segues into uh, a little game called Hitman 3. You may have heard of this game. Uh, Hitman 3 was an Epic Games Store exclusive for the past year. It finally came out on Steam. Now, as an Epic Games Store, blah, as an Epic Games Store exclusive, uh, it was also getting Epic... Uh, epic? It was getting uh, DLC. Release DLC. Uh, on the Epic Game Store. Uh, the Epic Game Store is... Uh, mm. Oh, I gotta push this all the way. Over. Okay. So now I'm over. Push it all the way. Um, yeah, the Epic Game Store uh, was getting that game. Uh, there was a big kerfuffle about when the game came out, I remember this. Uh, they wanted to include as DLC, uh, the content from Hitman 1 and Hitman 2. So you could play all the games, all three games content, all in Hitman 3. Uh, but then they were like, oh, people, you know, well the games weren't available on the Epic Game Store, so people most likely don't own them on the Epic Game Store, so they were like, oh, what do we do? So we made a thing where we, where you can register your games on our website, via an account system, oh boy, um, and then you can effectively claim the, the games and then play them on the Epic Games Store. Cool, okay, sure. Um, there's a skull thing. Uh, I guess I gotta, I gotta go from way up high. Or from the side? From the side. There we go. So, by the way, this, this level comes at the time where, um, uh, you board this, uh, this, like, ship. And, uh, yeah, this... This is basically, hey, you're sinking the ship. So, to the next level. So, as an alternate to this bit, oh no! And the ship goes under the ocean. Down to the bottom. You can see, uh, Zelda 2 dungeon right in the back there. But what, what screams underwater more like, uh, just water dungeons all over the place, sure. I love water dungeons, it's always good, so. Anyways, Hitman 3 came out, uh, on, on Steam. All that DLC came out. And now we're in this interesting part where here's a game that comes out day one with seven DLC packs, as well as also this Hitman 2, uh, DLC, and as well as that, the Hitman 2 DLC DLC, and the Hitman 1 DLC, and Hitman 1 DLC DLC. You get you following me right now? Good, because it gets even more confusing. There's a couple of different editions of the game that you can buy on Steam. Uh, this, uh, the first one is, it's called the Standard Edition. By the way, they're still doing the weird confusing thing 
where the um uh where the DLC is um or rather where the main game is split up into multiple DLCs. Why? I don't know, because it's not like the game's coming out in an episodic way. It's just they kept it up. I don't know why. So yeah, despite the game being out all on the same day, even on the original release, uh oh. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's released as DLC. So if you buy the standard edition, you buy a bundle with nine items in it. It's a little confusing, but sure, okay. Um, by the way, the game also costs 90 bucks. Uh, some people complain that it, I think it used to cost 85 on the Epic Games Store, and now it costs 90 bucks. Uh, or rather, it costs 89.95. And then I checked the Epic Games Store, and it costs 89.94. Which makes me really wonder what was going on there, but sure. Okay. So... There's that. There also exists the Deluxe Edition. The Deluxe Upgrade Pack? It's something. The Deluxe Upgrade Pack, from the looks of it, includes just skins. But it's not particularly clear that it's just skins because it's $55. It's just immediately as part of the price. That's a crazy, like, price to be for just skins. It might also include some just bonus, like, little just contract missions. I'm really not sure. They don't make it clear. Uh, that is 55 Australian. This is a lot of money. For reference, our games usually cost 90 bucks, so... The game on its own... Same price as every other game. Well, not every other game, because Square Enix is trying to charge 115 bucks for a game, but that's another story. Um... So... Alright, so there's that. You can get the game and the Deluxe Edition for 130 Australian. This is, a, I think, around a $5 saving. That's... that? Sure, okay. Um, and then, this is where we get into the, the rabbit hole. There is the Hitman Trilogy. And this is where we get into some kind of dicey stuff. The Hitman Trilogy contains the base game of Hitman 3, and the Hitman 2 DLC, and the Hitman 1 Game of the Year. This is, this is where we get confusing. They lump the term Game of the Year in. Uh, at this point. Okay. Um. Oh, cool. Uh, so we chucked Game of the Year. Okay. So we've got that. That's $150. Note, it does not contain the deluxe pack. It doesn't contain that content. Um. It also doesn't include the DLC to Hitman 2, nor does it include the, uh, what the, what is listed as the Game of the Year upgrade for Hitman 1. I'm still not sure if the, the Game of the Year upgrade is something you need if you buy the Hitman 1 regular DLC. I don't know, we're getting kind of confusing. That's the first three of the six bundles they list. Bundle number two, this one's actually kind of simple. Uh, it's, it's called the Premium Add-ons Bundle. It contains the Deluxe Edition on its own, the Hitman 2 uh, DLC DLC, and the Hitman 1 Game of the Year upgrade. It contains those three things, so specifically, the three things that are not part of that Hitman trilogy. So at least, you can look at that and go, oh, okay, that's that's the thing. It's still a lot of money. It, it's, it's, it's not cheap. Um, I don't know where exactly I'm going. This looks like I'm wandering backwards through the level, like... Like, I don't know, there were like four rooms there, so... We'll go back up, sorry. Um, so, now what? So now, let's introduce the Hitman 7 Deadly Sins DLC. Now, what? What? The, the 7 Deadly Sins. This is a new thing. So, on top of the premium, the, the deluxe edition, if you will, there exists the Hitman Seven Deadly Sins. These are seven seven dollar DLCs released. Um, and yeah, no, that's it. The seven seven dollar DLCs released. These are not part of the deluxe pack. I thought the deluxe pack was that, and also, hey, here's some loyalty skins. But no, the deluxe pack looks like it's like charging a ton of money. And that, oh look, the level's over. 
it looks like it's charging a ton of money, and then you've also got to pay 50 bucks or 49 bucks or whatever. But there's extra stuff, okay. Okay, that's confusing. Um, and then there's one more bundle on Steam, and I forgot what it even was. I kind of remember. So the point is, is that we've got this weird matrix of, of, of like, different kinds of things that you can buy. If you look at the store page, you don't realize that, like, yeah, some of those overlap. In fact, a lot of, a fair bit of those overlap. Uh, you would think that this $280 worth of DLC. It's either one, it is 100% one. Ah, uh, cool. Um, you would think that's 280 Australian dollars worth of DLC. On top of a $90 game. Uh, but you'd be slightly wrong, but only slightly. Because I still think it's $200 to try and buy all the content. It's still a lot of money. Granted, some of that money is you're buying Hitman 2 and Hitman 1 again. Also, by the way, you can buy Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 on Steam. Why do they not just point you to buying Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 on Steam? They've, they've confused me a ton. Like, legit. Oh my gosh. Like, I, I'm afraid to buy this because as an owner of Hitman 1 and 2 on Steam, I don't know what to buy. I really don't know. Now, they don't make it, they don't list at all on the store pages how to register the old games. And especially, as an owner of the old games, it should be blatantly obvious what's going on there, especially because you can program loyalty discounts on Steam. You can you can tell Steam, as an owner of this game, these people get a discount. That's why people still have discounts for F1 2021, because they're owners of previous F1 games. This is a level. This is 100% a level. I have no idea where I'm going. I am just descending into madness. Oh, does this level loop? Is that why, like, I'm... Am I back at the top? These are some very bored apes, I'll tell you that. Okay, now there's water, and I'm coming back up. Oh, 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 I need, I need out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they've really, they've really confused me. And yeah, they, without mentioning what's going on with the registering the old titles, what, what am I as a, as a buyer supposed to actually do? It really confuses me. So, moral of the story is, um, make it clear how to buy your game. And even better, don't do this. Don't, don't do all these different, like, DLC models. Keep, keep your DLC stu uh, simple. And, uh, keep it stupid as well. But also, even, even better. Right? Wait, hold on. What? Oh, okay. I, I, I see where I'm going, but I'm also like, I don't quite know where I'm going. Um... So, what's, what's the Blendo's rule to DLCs? Well, Blendo's rule to DLC is... Add a bundle. Make a one-click option to let me buy everything. Because then you will encourage me to buy everything. You'll also make it very clear when I own everything. You don't fragment off the player base by having people on one DLC and people on another and not having all the things. Um, even more preferably, force people into a season pass. That's maybe an un unpopular opinion, especially given the name microtransaction. But honestly, I think people are very willing to buy a... I guess that's the start of the level. I guess that was where I started. So how about let's go over here. Um, but honestly, again, like, people get very confused. What is going on? Uh, I don't mind games... Um, I think I remember Tomb Raider did this, where, oh, maybe not Tomb Raider, some, one game, uh, made a, a, like, complete the bundle collection at some point later down the line for complete, completing all the DLC, and, uh, then took off for sale the regular prices, I'm gonna say Payday on this one, I'll just say that, even though Payday's kind of re-entered it, <laughs> um, but, uh, you could effectively complete the bundle, get all the DLCs you're missing, for a disc- Yeah, maybe for a discount price, I'm not even too sure how that works out. Um... Oh, really? Here again? Okay. 
Um, you could, so you could get all that. As a new player, you'd be getting all the DLCs. As an old player, you'd be getting the DLCs that you missed. Um, and uh, that, I think, works generally alright. Because, hey, me as a consumer, I know that I need to get this, because it's the only thing you're selling me. Sure. Okay, cool. Um, but I, yeah, like, even bonus points, just go for a season pass. Two! Uh, number two. Uh, don't do deluxe editions. I'm, oh, oh, I'm going back up. Don't do deluxe editions. Don't. Just, just don't. If you're gonna do a pre-order bonus, don't, don't call it a deluxe edition. Call it a pre-order bonus. List it on the store page. Say, pre-order bonus. If you pre-order the game, you get this. If you don't pre-order the game, you have to buy it. Like, do that. Don't, don't call it deluxe edition. Because deluxe edition does not always imply you can buy it otherwise. There are so many games out there which include deluxe edition content that's not part of any other bundle. It gets very irritating. Try to manage it. It's not fun. Don't like it. No good. Very, very bad. Am I at the end of the level? I am. Hmm. Okay, I found the end of the level, so... Uh... Dude, what's the odds that the treasure thing is like... No, I'm back up here. Okay. Alright, so I've gone down the first two. So the second one and then go down the right. That's how I get to the end. Oh, but this is... This is gonna be a fun one. I... <laughs> a little bit too far. But then what's the point of coming over here? Because... didn't mean anything, hmm. Uh... So, yeah, rule number three. Don't do DLC. Make a sequel, guys. Just... Except you're already doing that. It's... Oh, I actually... You know what? I hate the DLC mod. Let's just... Let's just go there. There are so many games that, like, legit... You should just make a sequel. Or even better, just... Release a game for 150 bucks. Legit, if you said Hitman 3, Deluxe, and you just called it that, and uh, there were, and it cost 150 bucks, and it just included everything, I think people wouldn't mind as much. They'd definitely be like, yo, you're charging 150 bucks. Uh, I think some people may also be a little bit jaded by the entry fee, but that kind of is the point. You're charging a lot for something that's probably offering too much. Just tone it down, guys. Alright, so then we got these two guys, so I go down left here. And then we got the bubbles. We got the bubbles. And then, yeah, I'm curious what, what you do, like, here. You can't really go anywhere in this just descends into chaos, and then I'm back up the top. And then I go back down here. Okay, now I'm going through all these weird routes. And I go down here. That's the owl again. Wait, they're both the owl? They're both the owl. I'm... I'm very, very lost. I am actually rather very lost. Um... So yeah, I... I, I just can't with DLC. You know, you know, it's... Like, as much as I'm gonna, like, you know, people will say, Oh, like, you know, you Nintendo fanboy, here you are playing Warrior Land 2, like, what a... What a Nintendo fanboy kind of game. Maybe. But, I will say Nintendo has been generally, almost, pristine, almost, uh, 
they, oh wait, I never went down here. They never did DLC for the longest time. Um, and then I think pretty much one of the first thing games they did it with was Smash Brothers Wii U. And I didn't really, I don't really like the modeling of Smash Bros. Wii U. I, I'm not a big fan. It's, it's too, too aggressive. It, it asks too much out of you. They did the same thing with Smash Ultimate. Still not a big fan. You know what was a good one? Breath of the Wild. Uh, which, what a great segue. It's a game that I've been playing this week. Uh, I've been trying to play Breath of the Wild again on Master Mode. It's a bit tricky, but I'm surprisingly doing okay. So I'm happy there. Uh, I've just been the first, uh, the dungeon with the, uh, the Ritos. Um, that's the only dungeon I've done. I've kind of beelined straight towards there because I know that what I get from there is well worth my troubles. And will make the rest of the game a bit more of a cakewalk. But I'm also only have four hearts, so it's not, it's not the easiest. Um, but yeah, Breath of the Wild is such a good game. I, I keep reminding myself of it and it's like, yeah, nah, like... It's so good. Let's talk about this DLC model for a brief moment. Breath of the Wild introduced two DLCs. Two DLC packs. You can buy them separately for... Uh... My brain wants to say 20 Australian, or you could buy them both together for 30. 30. And that's it. That's it. The game, the game's done by then. Um, and in these DLC packs contains, uh, actually the first one was a bit weird. The first one didn't contain like a ton, but it did include things like a, um, an interesting kind of challenge, uh, dungeon off to the side. It added, um, did it add a couple of extra shrines, extra quests around? Something like that. The second one added uh, a whole nother dungeon as well as like a bunch of shrines and an interesting kind of story to link it all together. Um, and uh, had a motorcycle as a reward. It's amazing. Everyone should play exclusively that DLC and that's that's kind of the one thing I'm trying to really like run towards. That, I, I am very, very stuck. There we go. Very dead. Well, that was a level. So, yeah, I really like uh, its pricing scheme, but yeah, like, I mean, Nintendo's been pretty, pretty good with this. They, apart from uh, Smash, Smash Ultimate had a huge problem where it's like they had the Piranha Plant character as a pre-order bonus or an early buyer's bonus and then didn't include it on the Fighters Pass. So if you buy the Fighters Pass, you are lacking Piranha Plant. Um, also, two fighters passes. Just, oh, I know, I know, like the plan is there, but it's like, oh, it gets a bit annoying when it's like you buy this DLC to own all the DLC. This is zero or seven. It was seven. Or it's one. Oh, God. No, I'm a failure. Now I've got to figure out this whole level again to get another. I, I kind of want to take another stab at that. I, I really want to take another step at At the very least, like, the level is rather obvious now that I've wandered around it a ton. You go right twice. And you just keep going down. There we go. Well, I guess that's what it looks like when you don't pay attention and you try and guess way too early. Um, yeah, nah. DLC practices have gotten incredibly obnoxious, and uh, never mind the, uh, the stringing of, uh, loot boxes and all this other kind of stuff kind of in the middle. Like, my thoughts on loot boxes just got worse and worse over time after seeing worse and worse examples, because I don't play a ton of, like, newer titles. The ones I did... It was done okay. I didn't mind Overwatch's loot boxes because they were very extra to the game. And you could just play the game enough to get uh, all the content you wanted. I also never played Star Wars Battlefront 2. That was the one with the sense of pride and accomplishment. I never played it. So. That was the one I did the, uh, the E3 video on. Alright, what do we got here? Line at the bottom. Uh, there's either 3 or 5 or 9. There's still either 3 or 5 or 9. That is 3. Oh, I didn't waste too much more, but would have been better if I got it the first time. Alright. 
Cool beans. Here we go. 13 levels to go. Keep on keeping on that save. Ruins at the bottom of the sea. Inside the ruins. Wow. I'm rolling, rolling, rolling. Wow, this this definitely keeps going. Wow. Wow. I'm at the end of the level already. Thanks, guys. I actually could end the level right now as well if I really wanted to. <laughs> That's hilarious. I actually, I really like that about these bonus levels. They they toy on your expectations so much. So I assume what they want you to do is to go back and forth to actually uncover the the truth, the secrets. And there's no there's no jumps on this bottom row. That's the most amazing part. It just goes flat. At least you can cancel your roll at any point, so. Alright, so at one, I'm going to need a bit more money. And two, I'm going to need to be able to take out these guys. So, let's bounce this guy up. Give me food. Give me food. There we go. So, yeah, DLC. Oh. Uh, so let's talk about, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> While I was talking about Breath of the Wild, anything else kind of interesting about it? Uh, I would mildly, like, l enjoy playing Breath of the Wild on stream. I feel like it would be a very interesting game, and, and especially because Breath of the Wild is a game that, like, everyone should play without knowing anything about it, and then play it, like, watch someone play it knowing what you know about it, because the game changes so dramatically. Everyone has, like, so many different quirks about how they play that game. And, uh, it really, like, it shows through. It's like, there's so many different ways that you can take out enemies, that you can explore the environment, that you can solve some puzzles, in some cases. Uh, oh. I love how you can do a roll from there, as well. It's just like, oh, okay. That, <laughs> not quite. Um... So yeah, I I don't have a ton to say other than I think the performance is a little worse than I remembered. Like, the Switch definitely struggles a bit. It's not, like, overall horrendous, but it's definitely, like, it's enough that it's quite noticeable. I'm a little bit concerned about the, the sequel because it's like... I, I worry that Breath of the Wild was kind of pushing Switch hardware too much. Um, and it's a, it's a good looking game. It definitely, you know runs the part. And I, I think, like, artistically, it's still fine. Um, you can definitely, like, feel the shadow resolution kick in. You can feel, uh, like, things pop in a bit too close. You can definitely feel, uh, just kind of, like, not primitivity, but, uh, some of the underpower of the, the hardware. Um, but, like, it, it goes for it, and it does pretty alright at doing it. You can overlook it. Um, and especially doing it in handheld. I think that kind of makes it. Um, so that kind of makes it look like I've got to be able to roll from the left there. But I think i got to do the long roll to have this. Oh. Oh! You... You... Batarakira. He's a... Uh, he's a guy. I cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. There's a guy in the way. I get- I'm getting like... Uh, I remember playing Warrior Land, uh... Shake It slash The Shake Dimension, and I remember getting very, very frustrated about having to do these long treks. These long, like, runs to try and then, uh, get a secret. And, uh, that game is structured. That'll be an interesting one if I ever, like, think about playing it again. Um... That one's incredibly punishing because, yeah, you've got these, like, long secrets that you've got to uncover. And then bonus points, all the levels are structured uh, by taking an item at the end and then having a time limit imposed on you. Uh, oh, I jumped. Cool. Uh, you have a time limit imposed on you to, to get out. And so, in order to get the secrets that appear once you've gotten the final treasure, you have to get almost effectively a perfect run. 
it's incredibly brutal, especially when you don't know where you're going. And you don't know what to expect. It's uh, very, very punishing, uh, that game. Now, Warrior Land 4 might be in the same boat, but it's been ages since I've played that one. And I had, uh, emulator rewinds. There we go. So what's in here? Yeet! I appreciate he bounced off the block that he would have broken. Yeet! Yeet! Uh, I'm gonna still need him. Bonk. Money! Wow, that's a, that's a fair bit of money there. Cool. Um, so yeah. One last game uh, that I was playing in the week. I was playing Spyro 2 again. Um, I guess, yeah, here, here I am describing me playing Batman Arkham Knight, a game that I talked about last week, and then two games that I've definitely played before. Um, Spyro 2 is a game that I have played on my YouTube channel, twice. I enjoyed Spyro 2, it was, uh, I never grew up with Spyro 3, but I grew up with Spyro 2, and Spyro 1. And Spyro 2 I definitely liked, but I never really liked it as much as the first game. I think playing it again, I kind of felt it a fair bit more. Uh, what my, I guess my problems with Spyro 2 is that it tries a bunch of concepts and actually has, um, a surprising number of levels and ideas like, uh, like the hockey game, uh, the fact that there's really only, like, a handful of levels where you swim. You'd be amazed how few there actually are. Um, I drop down, but no, no, I can, I can work my way back. Um, yeah, there's, there's... Surprising lack of levels with swimming in them. Uh, the ground pound is only really used like 10 times. Um, so there's that. Uh, some of the power-ups like, uh, as well, like, uh, actually no, I, I take it back. I think, I think there's a good amount of like usage of like the power-ups and all that jazz. There you go. Oh no! I gotta jump earlier. Ah! Um, yeah, I, I think my brain's trying to latch onto, like, a criticism. I think the biggest thing I had is that, like, it tries the variety. Uh, and in turn, it's... Actually, okay, one thing I felt, it didn't have a difficulty curve. The game is, like, it's definitely, some of the easier levels are definitely easy. Like, Glimmer doesn't, you know, it's got full of enemies that don't hurt you. Like, like, you know, it, it knows it's the first level. But then, like... There's a lot of worlds in the second... Sorry, there's a lot of levels in the second world that really do kick your butt. I, I have trouble with a Fracture Hills. I have trouble with a Scorch. Scorch is full of a bunch of enemies and it's like... Those are in the, the second world. I didn't jump. I didn't jump. <laughs> ah. The best part is that I know exactly that that's going to be where the, um, where the little, the little treasure is. I don't have to necessarily perf- Actually, oh, oh. I was going to say, I don't have to necessarily perfect it since, like, no, I do. Because I need to be able to be up there. Oh, gosh. It's happy music, but I'm not happy on the inside. Uh, that being said, though, I really do like Spyro 2. It's a great game. Uh, the PS2 like got very spoiled by that Spyro trilogy because they're very, very um, uh, approachable collectathons as well. There's so many like real like dirty, thick collectathons that came out in the late '90s, and uh, I hope that's it. Oh, pain. There's, there's one spot left. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's some real dirty collectathons that came out around that time. Uh, Banjo, Tui, Donkey Kong 64, a two. Um, there's, uh, oh, my brain's trying to latch on. There was one other one I played and it was just like, there's so many things to get. It's like, oh. So, but I'll, I'll scream onto those two. Banjo, Tui in particular. Banjo, Tui is just, it's a masterpiece in how to go too far. Banjo 2 is legit like, oh, it's way too far. Um, I think Donkey Kong 64 is okay. I think it's just because like Donkey Kong 64, the only backtracking you need is the different Kongs. 
and a, maybe some of the extra abilities. But like, it, it keeps it relatively simple. It's just painful that you gotta walk through most of the same levels five times. Um, but what does what does Spyro do that uh, results in me giving it praise? Well, Spyro, it's collectathon status, especially Spyro 2, we'll go for it. Uh, it has three collectibles. It has talismans, which you get by finishing the level. You literally walk to the end of the first 14 levels, the ones in the first two worlds, you get a talisman. Cool. Uh, you've got the orbs. The orbs are the special challenges. Most levels have two, three, or four. It's just about that. It, the, none of them are that hard to find. Um, some of them are a little obscure. Some of them are actually just hidden away. Um, but some, especially most of them, are just the inner level. A guy will give you to them if you do a challenge. And that challenge might be a little different. You might have to be on a trolley. You might have to play hockey. Okay. Whoa, whoa. First try. First try. Oh, now do I have to be flat? I might have to be flat. Lots of money down here. I wonder if, uh... I wonder if I need to keep going that way. I think I might need to keep going that way as well. Is that enough? Well, they got the- they got the drip. You got the drip. Ooh, it keeps going- oh, uh, 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 This isn't quite what I was expecting. I was expecting an actual, like, rest of the level up here. I'm a bit confused. Maybe it's on the way? I'm actually confused. I also don't know what's with those platforms there, but... Yeah, like, maybe it was that door and I just missed it? Like, did I go in that door? It looks like I must have. Let's just roll to the other side. Um, hmm. Spire 2 is great, so... Uh, so let me recount all these other doors along the way. So there's this one. Which just looks like it's for coins. really does just that's just for coins okay that's probably the one so I've got to roll backwards somehow because yeah this was the uh the fish fish. Okay. Alright, I think I've, I've got the room, so I must, I must have to come from above. Because if I pan the camera up, uh, it's impossible to really pan the camera up, but there must be, like, a slope that rolls the other way there. So I'm just gonna go all the way over there. Okay. Alright. Plan set. Plan set. So here I have, I've gone 140 minutes without really making direct comment as to what I've been doing in uh, 140 minutes? 100 minutes. Uh, without really making direct comment as to what I'm doing in Wario Land, but... This game kinda, it, it does speak for itself, but it's also like, it's pretty good fun. This is where I thought I would be. There's no slope to really lean the other way. And 
there's two blocks there. Because, like, if I drop down, then I'm back here, and that is exactly, you saw that, that was where the two things were. Uh... Ah. I can break one of the blocks, but... It's even got a slope in it. Hold on. Yeah, so it's got a slope of its own. Makes it look like it's an outdoor? going down this way. Maybe I gotta drop down into it. Maybe it's got an open roof. So I'm just trying to like visualize it in my head. If this goes... No, that was a bit simpler than I thought. Oh, I was here the whole time. I explored every other room before I went into this one. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Cooper football player. Uh, I actually didn't quite... Okay, I did. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't quite sure I saw him. I just felt it wasn't any of the rest. But that bottom right one didn't really, like, click in my head, so... There we go. Ah, uh, let's just- let's just roll, let's just get out of here, get- get the heck out of Dodge. about that. It's actually going to be kind of interesting because like once I've gotten, well, you only need the money to do these bonus games, so I'm starting to you know, get close to getting all of them done. Uh, is it eight? Is it three? I think it is eight. Yay. Another piece of paper thing. Oh, that goes right there. Cool. Okay. Okay, I guess. Yeah. 12 more levels to go, but also, don't forget, there's a bit more treasure I've yet to get. Um, so yeah, how many levels am I missing treasure on? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, well, that's a level I haven't done, so 6, 7. Seven. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back and do seven levels with treasure. Let's do this one. Ruins at the bottom of the sea. That's an interesting picture. Everyone loves temple music. Sign, nope. Gonna hop out. There we go. All good. So anyway, yeah, I hope you all are having a great January. Um, there'll be one more January stream, I guess, because January has a 31st, so that'll be, that'll be good fun. 
Uh, I guess I actually might be able to finish Wario Land next stream. I'm gonna try and like binge this one, so I'm gonna finish this world, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get the seven treasures that I'm missing. Um, we'll see how long that takes, but it shouldn't take too long. And then uh, that that prime me up right because not only do I have to do ten levels in the next uh, stream, but also I've got to do a bonus little finishing level. I uh, know that's gonna take me a bit. So. Uh, <laughs> I remember that level being absolute pain. Um, what does that actually entail for me, like, moving that back? And I love how they're also expecting me to bounce off uh, enemies, like, much more than you had to before. Oh, but I hate, like, those guys. I absolutely hate those. Alright, this is one that's, like, pretty clear. It's a bit precarious, but sure. Okay. Alright, then I hit the switch, and then I just... get out of dodge there. So I guess the question is, what was all that that I skipped earlier? Ooh, that's also interesting as well. Maybe- okay, I actually feel bad. Ah, uh, I feel bad because I'm probably going to take all this damage on the way. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I- like... I mean, I- I always feel like the year's going a bit quicker. Uh, now, and I don't really know how or why, uh, but that is a fun enemy spot right there. Okay. So yeah, for reference, there's all this, like, down there. We've got this which moves back and forth, and I don't particularly know why that moves back and forth. Like... Come fight me. Come fight me. Come fight me. Uh, but... Like, January is always, like... Alright, cool. Double cool. Is there another enemy? Yeah, there's one. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get him back, but... Oh, and that's the door up there! Ah! Yeah, there's so many, like, weird little nooks and crannies over here. That's probably what they wanted, because, like, I had to move the platform actively to, um, to get to that, so that's probably, that's probably the goods. Yeet! Uh, but, like, yeah, January is a, a weird one for me, because, um, uh, you know, it's the side of the year. And I always feel like, oh, do people take it slow in January, but no, like, January is usually, like, I want to get back into things. I want to, like, really, like, you know, cement my routines. Uh, so one thing I actually did try to really do was, um, I, oh, okay, okay. I really wanted to, to work on my Discord bot. I, I maintain my own Discord bot. I call Wendo Bot. I post this code on GitHub. And, uh, I had spent, I, I remember, I, I've got the early commits for testing... A new, like, just way to structure repositories and all that stuff and, and, and stuff like that to make it a bit easier for other people to contribute to it. Um, and I had started that back in March. And I hadn't finished that, really. I also was in this kind of weird spot where it's like, okay, well, I don't really want to, like, commit. Um, I mean, I do want to commit, but, like, I don't really want to commit, like, stuff that's partially done because uh, I'm, like, always changing it. I always really wanted to, like, change it up. Um, maybe I should have been committing this whole time. I probably should. <laughs> just to, like... Just, to uh, make sure it's, it's working, I guess. Um, my dev loop is so, like, mess. But, like, I, I'd been kind of putting it off for so long. And I kind of felt like some of it was, like, I was getting burnt out from work. Um, and, uh, some of that was. Uh, but then, yeah, over the Christmas break, I put in a fair bit of good effort to make it all work out. Um, 
And, uh, especially my last week at work, it's been, like, I've been really doing, like, a change of pace. Like, just, I've been writing a lot of, like, documentation and stuff. And I'm like, you know what, I've been kind of longing to, like, just program, to write something down and have it run and work. And I was going to say, maybe write a test, but I'm not writing tests for my Discord stuff, because Discord keeps changing its stuff all the time. And it's not really worth keeping it up anyways. Uh, it works by inspection. What is going on here? Top of the underwater pyramid, I guess. Oh, there's a boss room. Uh oh, did someone say boss? It's a big fish. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. Then I get him from below. Not quite. Well, it's not like he can take me out, necessarily. Someone on Retro Achievements is probably pointing that one out. <laughs> this one will be a, a kind of interesting set. It's probably relying on a couple of things, but I've already gotten like half the achievements on Retro Achievements on this one. I haven't actually looked it up yet. The Spyro set on Retro Achievements is a little disappointing because it didn't demand really anything beyond- Now I'm angry! It didn't demand anything. Oh, I- I apparently can buy a Prime. Cool. Wow. Wow. Do people, like, legit, like, fall for those? People probably do. Actually. Guys, don't fall for scam links like that. Like, legit. Legit. Like, don't click on that. You don't- you don't need to buy Prime followers. Like, you're just skewing metrics? I don't even understand. Who knows? A three, a two, a one! Alright, what have I got? Nothing? It could be one, one or seven. One or seven. It's one. Woo! And there we go. Now that was a kind of bit weird, because... That was the fourth level, but it was a boss level. Yeah, it actually just kind of kicks you back to the rest of the game. You gotta find another secret level, a secret exit. So let's see if I can go quick fast, because I don't particularly need money. I think I'm going to be probably set for my total. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to be set for the total. Like, I don't need uh, an end of level one for this level anymore. And there's only 11 left, and I'm going to be finding some the other levels but yeah you know what I wish these bots did I wish that they um uh let's see so oh, this way. I wish that uh, those like those bots that say oh how to buy followers I wish they just stayed on your channel give you a free trial you know but nah they don't they don't. Yeah. I actually, I always find it's a bit weird, like, I see people on the internet, um, always compare the, the arbitrary internet points. Like, the numbers they get. They'll be like, oh, like, I've got this much Reddit karma, or I've got this many Twitter followers, or... It actually, it did used to be a thing on, on YouTube at time. I was like, oh, like, you're, you're a dwindling channel, you've got barely any subscribers. And it's like, at some point, like, that really stopped mattering. I think it's during the whole... Um, well, sorry, it's, it's stop ma it stops mattering to an individual. Um, am I just getting more money down here? Cool. <laughs> now I gotta go back up. <laughs> Do all this again. Um. Ah. Uh, uh, but, yeah, I, d I don't know why, like, that mentality is, like, so... Prominent? You know what I mean? Like, there's there's a lot of lot of people out there online who do legitimately do the numbers game, and uh, and I'm gonna like mildly call it out. This kind of stuff happens on like Facebook when it really shouldn't. Facebook should not be a competition. I don't know why <laughs> Facebook circles end up being a competition like that. It's it's crazy. Um, so yeah. Uh.
Hey, how's it going, Mr. Rage? Oh, I think I- okay, okay. So I think- whoa. Overslept, forgot about the stream. It's okay, I've got a bit more uh, uh, stream to do. Uh, my goal is to find the secret level in this level, beat the next level, and then go back to all seven levels that I'm missing uh, thingies in. Missing treasures. Because the next stream I'm going to need to be able to um, well, finish the game, so I kind of want that. So I'm thinking if I drop this guy here... It's like putting this guy here and then you can... No? Because it's not... Like, that's the treasure. I don't need to particularly be there. I swear there was, like, jump there or something. It's not off to the other side. But there are coins up there, and there's coins over here. What am I picking up over there? Jeez. You, you know it's great. You know, you know, like old games are great when it's like, oh, like me wandering off screen. What's going on to happen? be there, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an interesting thing trying to hunt around for the, the secret levels. Like you just gotta you just gotta find where the where the like the, the weird little door is. So you're trying to find what's like a part of the level that's uh not um, well, that, uh, that you don't end up using, pretty much. Uh. Actually, was it this room? I don't remember coming back down from here. Yeah. Yeah, so I went up here, and then I just, like, went into this door at the end, kept on charging through, and there's that, and there's the boss room. So I think what it probably is, is that I've got to find a, a breakable wall in here, because, like, I see a bunch of, bunch of coins. Oh, there we go. Okay. What about up here? Oh, more breakable blocks. Cool. Can I go down? No, not yet. What about this duck? Not this guy. Down I go. Oh, hi there, duck. Hey, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I, I, I thought, <laughs> I thought I kept on going there. Um, yeah. So back in here, now I should be able to continue going down. I'm amazed that worked out, and then I landed on the last one. Cool. So now I'm up here. It's one of these don't get springed kinds of rooms. That was a very bored ape. Uh, I'm going past him. Oh, oh, oh! I'm going. I'm going. That's just disappointing. NFT. Uh, yes, yes, that is. Yeah, I had the big discussion earlier on. Um. Uh, Twitter allowing um, NFTs uh, to be used as profile pictures by, um, or like you can you can register. I forgot how it was exactly, but yeah, you you as a, a Twitter Blue user uh, can just like claim that you own this uh, OpenSea's uh, NFT image, 
to which then Twitter lets you use it as your profile picture um, with a hexagon border to signify that you've got an NFT. And I go, who would want to like set themselves as a target like that? Like it's kind of, it's kind of absurd. Um, I am out of the level. See ya. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, also it's like, well, you could just upload your own image to OpenSea's, and then just, there you go. So, technically, I finished this level, but that's a secret exit. So it's got to mean something good, right? There we go. A wonderful secret exit. Captured syrup? Oh my gosh. Uh, what we got going on here? More, more ruins levels. I hope you appreciate ruin levels. Ruin levels are fun. I don't mind them. Every game- Okay, ruins are like- They're interesting in real life. They smell. They 100% would smell. And honestly, like, stuff crumbling or being like, kind of like, breaking around you if you're like, legit treading on it and not just like- uh, here is a tour guide who has set up a enclosed area every single day for 500 tourists every day to walk through and not damage anything. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like there's a lot of, there's a lot of things where I just like witness the, uh, the joys of nature. Also the birds. True, yeah. Yeah, like, I- that's always a fun one, like, when you go on, like, nature walks, and it's just- or not nature walks, but, like, you know what I mean? It's, like, a national park kind of thing. Um, and there's so much, like, it's walled off. One cake only. You only need one cake! That's Warrior's diet. One cake, and he's, uh, full for life. Or at least, like, 15 seconds. I- oh, I want to jump off the bird! Over here! I don't know what these, like, platforms are even, like, meant to be. Like, what do they look like? Pterodactyl? Why is the sky? Right. There you go. I did it for the money! It was all for the money! Pelican! Exactly. Uh, whoa, oh! oh. They definitely do give you a bit of money in these, like, bonus levels, but not, like, crazy ton. Ah. Oh, they give me the shot guy. Why would you do that to me? Two guys in disguise. Uh, I might need to bounce off one. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Not bounce off that one. Get him in there. That's a real, like, interesting kind of jump. But I believe that is how they intend for you to do it, only to then... Okay, boss door. Now I just need to find where the treasure is? That wasn't hard. <laughs> that wasn't hard at all. It was right there, under my nose. Let's go, normal difficulty. Yet another one of these. So what is this, Mark? Number 33 that I've done? I'm getting good at this. I'm not gonna get good at this, I, I missed it. Oh, I got it, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I, I, like, looked at it and I was like, oh no, I actually, like, just blanked out entirely. But no. Uh, okay. The lucky guess pays off. Uh, and then I guess I just jump up and we do the boss door. Cool. So who's the boss? What, what happened such a, oh, what happened that we, we suddenly, like, we need to save Captain Syrup? I'm hitting this guy constantly until he does something. Uh, 
Maybe his head is uh, a bit vulnerable. Oh. <laughs> My head's a bit vulnerable after that. Down I go, but not too far. <laughs> oh, how kind of him to put Captain Sarah back here in the bubble so that I can witness her flying away again. Look at this happy bubble. It's a bit too happy now. Oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, n oh no! <laughs> How are you supposed to do that? Maybe, maybe they don't touch you. Like there just seems like there was one. Maybe that's it. I I still love that. Like I I'm playing these just extra side missions, and you'd only know that. I mean, you only know that there because when you beat the game, it tells you, hey, look, there's a secret exit in this level. But then also like you just gotta find that there's a secret exit there. And in this case, there are two secret exits. Oh, he's fighting away. You. Yeah. There you go. That's it. That's uh, yet another level and yet another ending to the game. So, but wait, we got we got another one of these puzzle things to go. Uh, that is just one. Or it could be four. I hit it way too soon, and then I hit. Wow! Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I actually, I actually just was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, so I hit A to. I'm really dumb. I'm really dumb. Oh. Alright, get out of here. So I guess what? That's it. This is an underwater sunken ruin. How do you knock her so hard she broke a hole in the ceiling? And look at that. All the money was here. The whole time. Or I was very happy about that. There you go. What a great ending. So as a as a different ending, it's a little different because you got the little different environment there. To which warrior then swims away. He is swimming to the surface here. Might as well watch his end credits. That'll be good fun. Uh, yeah, no. Oh, I, I accidentally hit A to... My brain was just like, oh, I hit B to call the number, so... And then B didn't respond, so I was like, oh, I hit A to cancel, thinking that there's more buttons on my controller than there actually were. And then I... The worst part is that my guess of one would have been correct. So... But no, I guessed zero like an idiot. Alright, so now I gotta... Do that level again, just get to the end and attempt the, the puzzle. And then, uh, yeah, so the, the other goal is just, let's go and get the seven remaining treasures. Which shouldn't be too bad, except I've got to find where the treasures are on the levels. So that'll be kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be good fun. Do you like how, uh, the, the emulator crashed in, like, eight minutes at the beginning of the stream and then, like, now it's been all fine. It's like, yeah, no, it's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. Kiyotake Hidoji. Did he design Wario? I don't know. Maybe. I still think it's absolutely amazing that, like, Game Boy games, especially at this time, it's like, this is, this is the map designer. Maybe there's two of them. Sometimes, but it's like, this game is like, you know, the, these games were made by like, 10 people. Tops. Like, there's a crazy number of, like, and I, I guess maybe that was at the time that like, First Party would pump out a lot of games. It's like, now it's like, now we talk about like, oh, the last Zelda game was 2017. 
Like it nearly came, Breath of the Wild came out nearly like five years ago. Had DLC, sure. Um, I actually thought that was an interesting um, thing I was, I was thinking about a uh, Pokemon. They've got the new game coming out like this week. Uh, Pokemon Legend Arceus. Uh, and there's the leaks. Uh, I, all I've seen is it looks a bit better than Sword and Shield in terms of what it's trying to push on the hardware. Um, but it, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it might still be at the same pitfalls. We'll see when the game comes out. Um, but like what I found, like thought was amazing is that like, yeah, games take forever nowadays. You got to, like so many people who like, you know, have to go into making them, you got to plan way ahead of time, you got DLCs that prolong out the game, and then I realized, yeah, the the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC, the last one, came out 14 months ago. And then they've got this entire game that they've made, like, in that kind of meantime, like, that's really kind of surprising. And also, yeah, remember they made Pokemon Sun and Moon and then Ultra Sun and Moon in 2017, so Sword and Shield... Kind of came out on a bit of a quick schedule, if that's the same team working on that. Um, sometimes I feel like, oh, like, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were, like, kind of cash -ins. Like, it's like, they're just, like, lingering ideas. Um, and most of the people making, uh, you know, main technological improvements and extra content like that, a lot of that ended up being on, like, Sword and Shield. Um, I don't know really that many people who played, um, uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But, yeah. And... So, what's my stage clear? We're at 80%, but then it's gonna tell me that my treasure is at 78, six, or 66. Sorry, that's the other one. And then the picture is 78, because I'm an idiot. I hit it a bit too soon. So, alas, let's uh, restart the game with, with four buttons. Alright, so... Play this level again, because I'm an idiot. Uh, at least it's uh, not the secret treasure. Oh my gosh. I think it's kind of weird that, like, I played, like, the first 20 levels in one stream. Like, one two-hour stream, and then, like... Last stream and this stream is like eh, 10 levels, like that's it. I don't know, maybe the secret levels have more to them. Uh, I just need to hit that switch, really. Uh, but there was a lot of stuff up above, so I kind of want to get it. There we go. There's a lot of goods. 100 goods, there we go. But yeah, like, I don't really know how to feel about, like, games being too massive, because on the one hand, it's like, the workflows are getting better. Not, not perfect, but, uh, definitely, like, people are figuring out how do you, how do you effectively make a game with hundreds of people working on them? Um, and as much as, like, you know, there's the Rockstar Sweatshop, the in and out circle, it's like, you know, like, Grand Theft Auto is a remarkably consistent experience. Um, like, there, there's gotta be some, some merit to, they make a game and none of it feels oddly out of place. I think everything has a certain degree of it's kind of out of place. Um, but not the, oh, I'm quite at the end of the level already. Um, but you know what I mean? It's like, there's, uh... There's, uh, there's some games, actually, like, hold on, me, me chatting about those, those Batman DLCs, it's like, that's a perfect example of just, like, ah, oh, that's a perfect example of, um, like, something that feels, actually, they didn't feel that out of place. I've played DLC, though, that's, like, very, very odd feeling. I think it's because, like, sometimes it's, like, they're like, oh, this little side studio made this DLC for a game, and then, like, um, yeah, sometimes it feels a little odd. How about, let's say, uh, Wolfenstein the Old Blood? How about we go with that? Or it's like, tone-wise, it's like, it feels like two very, like, different games were made to, like, try and be expansions, and then they just decided to release both and, like, the same, the same release? Uh, it's a very odd one. Um... I 
I assume I've just got to track that it was that guy. Now he's going to fight away. Yet again. Hurrah. Fighting never wins. There we go. Alright, another chance for redemption. Another chance for the redemption. Alright, this time, don't hit B until I know it. Don't know what... What caused me to do it? Okay, it's all of them. It could be five or six. Um... That's making me think it's... That's definitely five. Or it's nine. Oh, boy. What have I done? Oh, my gosh. Someone would have headed me on that one if I got that one wrong. I called it way too soon. Oh, oh, I don't, feel, I don't feel happy about that one. So anyways, I will do a stop when I hit the credits. Uh, not, sorry, not a stop, not a stream stop, sorry, a, a, a game reset. Because I gotta get the, the treasures. I gotta get the treasures. And out they go again. I don't know if it saves here. Actually, it might have saved earlier. Yeah, it should be okay to, save, <laughs> to restart there. Start from the beginning of stage. Anyways, if I go hit start... Oh, well start's not the answer necessarily, but... Uh... If I go in here, I should have... There we go. Okay. <laughs> Can't exit the level, so you gotta just hit the buttons. Okay! Uh... So... Let's get the treasures. So, I've got two missing up the top, I've got two there, one here... And then there should be two in a row down here. So that's my goal. Let's get the seven treasures uh, and call it a stream. <laughs> and I know, right? I never got the treasure in the very, very first level. Did I really just hit B on the scroll and it was just like, yeah, no. <laughs> You're not doing the level. All right, so Warrior wakes up. First of all, he wakes up. He needs money because if I want to get the treasure, I need money in order to get it. There's, there's way too many side rooms in this first area. Treasure hunting is always great. Collectathons, like, got so good at it, and also so bad. I realize I, I made a claim about uh, Sparrow being a great collectathon, but um, it kind of is. It is. Well, especially when I get 100 points like that. Um. You can definitely, like, feel the difficulty, like, spikes in this level, though. Not spikes, but, like, feel it ramp up. Because it's just like, oh, here's a level, there's just money everywhere. Like, that's great. That's the good fun of it. Whatever happened to difficulty, you know? Difficulty's now, like, weird, like, difficulty settings and weird numbers and stuff like that. Nah, man. All you need is just really weird level design. And that's, that's exactly what, uh, we'll see you next time, I'll guarantee that. I feel like I, <laughs> I don't necessarily need all this money, but I'm gonna keep grabbing it anyways. Because again, like, I've gotten... We're at that point where it's like, okay, now I've gotten... 40 of the 50 end level things. And, uh... The treasures you gotta buy in, in the level, so... Oh. I'm in the walls, I'm in the walls. Does this look like a secret to you? Oh my gosh. It does! Look at that, it was there the whole time. I think I've got to finish the level though, because you gotta like save the- Ooh. Maybe you don't. Should I test this? Should I test whether I actually have to finish the level? Or do I just save in the menu? I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna actually test it. So we'll get the- we'll get the treasure. Okay. Viking hat. Okay. Then what I do is that I'm gonna hit select, I'm gonna hit save. And then it just exits the level for me. But then start from- Yeah, no! I got the treasure. That's all I need. 
All right, cool. That makes it a little bit quicker. All okay. right. So I'm gonna need money in this level again. I'm gonna need money in all the levels again, really. Oh, gosh. Money, money, money. Makes the world go round. So many songs about money, by the way. It's so easy to, like, just pick stream titles that are just, like, a song with money in the name. I- my favorite part is that, like, my- my music library is so full of, like, just, like, frog songs and stuff like that. And yet, for my original Warrior Land streams, I picked two songs. I picked Easy Money, a song by King Crimson, and, uh, The Big Money, a song by Rush. And it's just like, wow, like, even I know, like, two frog songs like that. Um... I guess easy money. Sorry, the big money is not necessarily. Uh, I guess it's kind of prog. It's in that art rock kind of camp, though. I think that is legitimately how you get the the treasure. Like you have to just go through the struggle of bringing a penguin all the way up. And it keeps like bouncing off the the roof here. So I think the the only thing you can do is carry one, or simultaneously like have one on this ledge, and then bounce off it, and not not touch not touch its its poop. Oh, come on. Okay. Because like let me just see that I can bounce off this guy. Onto, oh. I want I want to see that I can bounce off that guy to the platform above. Oh gosh, it, it just doesn't make it easy, does he? Okay, you can. You can make that jump. So all I need is a penguin. Carry the penguin and then hopefully not, like, not botch, botch that up. Alright, so go here. Get this guy under my belt. You know, that was easier, like, thinking about it this week as opposed to last week. Last week I was like, oh, how do I do this? Oh, I tried it forever. Couldn't figure it out. Don't have enough money. <laughs> I'm, I'm five gold short, so let's just, like, keep going on. And then... Ooh. 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 I might have to just, like, scrounge by by taking out these guys. Cause like, the enemies keep respawning, and they will always drop, like, one coin. And... <laughs> in- in this- in this economy, one coin is all I need. Okay, so I'm- I'm now at a hundred. Time to get it, and not get it wrong. Oh boy. Oh boy, how- what have I put myself in this time? I swear. Alright. Exactly a hundred. Exactly a hundred. Alright, better get this right, better get this right. Alright. Weird bear guy? I don't know. Sorry. Cool. Okay. Alright, it's all fine. It's all fine. That's actually kind of interesting. I, I <laughs> didn't even realize, but like, yeah, you can just like stop in the middle of a level. Like, you just say save, and then yeah, like, you can just load the level again. Like, if I go back in, and I just say like, oh, like, level. That's not even the level. That that's not even the level. Oh, no, no, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Bizarrely puts you like in a weird spot, but like, sure, okay. At the very least, it's like, well, it saved the treasure. And that's the most important part, so. Uh, oops, sorry. Yes, it is okay to erase the save point. So now we're gonna go down into the cellar. And I'm glad that that is exactly how you start off the level. <laughs> oh, this one's full of, like, the weird, like... The weird bits, so it's probably at the end. But it's World 1, it shouldn't be too bad. I just need, just need a bit of money. 
Money, money, money is all you need. Crabber the Rapper is such a <laughs> crabio. He is a crab when he's doing that. I like all this money here. It's like, it's not fun to get, but. Made that easy on me. That's okay. I think they want me to take the hit here. No, they don't. They don't. <laughs> oh, they want me to take a hit there, though. I say that like knowing I played this, what, three weeks ago? <laughs> Alright, so the end of the level's there, which means I think that is the the end, so I've just got to be able to get in there. So I've just got to, like, jump off the right ledge, I guess. Like that. And then have this guy pull me out. And then that's it. This is a bit easier than, like, I expected finding these. Alright, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go. Duck guy, duck guy, he's a duck. He quacks and talks like a duck, I guess. Top left, easy. So what was that, four? That's four of the levels? No, no, it's three. That's, that's three of the levels I needed. I don't know why my brain was like latching on to, to things that hadn't happened. I might as well just finish the level, because it's right there, like... It's slightly easier than going to the menu. Getting good? Yeah, maybe. I mean, this is World 1. This is World 1. I Also, I guess it made me realize that, yeah, no, the World 1 levels are short. Okay, so, yeah, one, two, three, four. That's, that's it. Okay, four levels. All right, defeat the giant snake, except I might not have to defeat the giant snake. I just have to find the hidden treasure. Uh, well, that looks like a path. And then we've got that. Climbing up. Really climbing up. Uh, oops. <laughs> there you go. Whoa, oh. oh, I guess I need more money. Okay, jump over, jump over, oh. And left. It's coins. And then this keeps going. Yeah, I definitely remember going this way. Maybe it was down here? No, because that's the boss. Maybe it was down here? No, because that's money. <laughs> well, the good news is I'm not going to be short of money. I don't think there's uh, any reward for having, like, loose money at the end of the game. Um, you ultimately just need to get to the... Or get, get the treasures. That's all you need the money for. Spare money is a uh, funsies. Where it's like, yeah, Wario Land 1 was like, yep, make sure you got the right money or else. Uh. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. It was here the entire time. Cannot believe it. Alright, the bandana man. I don't think he even has a bandana. Maybe? Maybe it's a bald patch. Very big one. He's probably self-conscious about that. And I would be too. Real talk, have you guys been like watching YouTubers with like... Hair keeping advertisements? I'm the kind of guy who still watches Pro Jared and he, he does ads for hair. Like uh... Yeah. It's 
a, it's an interesting one. They all do. A lot of them do. It's it's gotten worse than Dollar Shave Club and Honey. It's it's legit. Like <laughs> there's only so many companies who, who advertise. And yeah, Manscape. Yeah, Manscape. Manscape's always always up there. Yeah, Dollar Shave Club was weird too. I just realized you can't hit select while in the water. You gotta like get up here. Yeah, very bizarre. Alright, do I remember where this one's probably gonna be? Um And it is like I I mean I guess like there's a there's a tangential relevancy to like the kind of content, but it's like you know, apart from like Raid Shadow Legends, like as being like the meme one, at least Raid Shadow Legends, like, well, it's a game. <laughs> it's a mobile game. It's kind of one off. Like, I, 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 I've never been one to buy or to play a mobile game because of an ad, let alone pay money for one. So, uh, Raid Shadow Legend ads kind of fall flat on me, but, uh, also Raid Shadow Legends, you want to have a sponsorship. You know how to email me, being there is at gmail.com. Um, but like, legit, like, uh, I guess shaving, cause, cause men? There's a lot of money there. They're trying to get those whales? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I always get like, I always get real skeptic whenever like something has a lot of advertise. Advertising the males is tricky. Yeah, yeah, because like, yeah, I, I don't know if like I'm represented, and yeah, I, I, I don't particularly watch TV. Every time I watch TV, I always get like very like concerned about how much like life insurance gets <laughs> advertised. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on here? Uh, which room is it the right one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that's definitely the current to bring you back, so now I've just got to watch out for them eels. Eels. Dude, everyone loves eels. Raycon is especially, apparently not that good. Um, yeah, oh yeah, 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 Project also advertises Raycon. Yeah, like... Jeez, like the, um, the number of, uh... Yeah, like yeah, I I hear about them a ton, and then it's just like I don't know anyone who like legitimately has a, a rake on. Uh, this would be the end of the level, so maybe there's something back to the eels. Because I assume the eels drag you down into the current. So maybe there's something down. Ah. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Get on my level. Uh, VPNs are another one. I doubt Netflix allows the country VPN thing. Yeah, it feels like everyone knows about the VPN thing. Like, it feels a bit too obvious. So I'm always- I'm always skeptic. I actually had, um, one guy recommend, um, a VPN service. Not sponsored. They were just like, yo, I use this, and that's it, and it's none of the ones that, like, I ever see in advertising. It's all, it, it was just some really, like, ob not obscure, because, like, it didn't seem like it was a weird scammy website, but it was just not one that, like, you'd see advertised. And I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but it's definitely, like, yeah, like, it's, it's weird. Like, the, the companies that, like, advertise a ton... And then the companies that don't. You know, you know, like... So, uh, I use my VPN for a curse reason. I use it to make all my traffic UDP, which TVG would not throw. Oh, that's that's pretty curse. And actually kind of amazing. And I wonder if, like... I, I'm on Aussie Broadband. I wonder if they do that. Uh, 
Uh, this was in the ADSR. So, ah, oh, okay. Maybe maybe it's it's a different time now. The trick is to just invent your own protocol. How about how about okay? How about we write a layer on top of UDP? We call it quick, and it'll be really fast. We don't have to like. We can go. Oh, like maybe let's not uh do um. Uh, what's something we don't have to do? Security things. Let's just do it. Uh, skip all the security. Or do it all in one go. Easy. Easy. I'm just joking, by the way, because I know that there's a. Yeah, <laughs> we're pulling a Google. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a. That's a fun one. The fact that like TCP never like got um redone. For like so long. I mean, it works, but it's also like, yeah, like it's an interesting one. Competitor IP. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Ooh, ooh, can you fix IP? Can 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 you like not do a a, a slash um a slash uh eight region for local addresses or a slash ten region for local addresses? Why am I blind? Why am I not like having uh? Or the other layers of competitive subnet masking. Oh, like, like, you can have subnet masking, but, like, don't, like, dedicate, like, a certain slash 10 range of the IPv6 range to exclusively local hosts. It's, like, there's a, there's a bizarrely, like, massive region that all refers to local hosts. It's just, it's crazy. Um, I, I was reading this up, but, like, apparently with IPv4, um, like, 127.0.0.1 refers to local hosts, but... As part of the IP spec, it's reserved that all 127 dot anything after that, all those addresses can refer to local hosts, and therefore no one assigns them. Why am I having trouble? I'm like, going through this, I hit the switch, and then I go, oh, I can't leave. Yeah, why am I actually, like... Hold on, legit, like, what am I actually doing wrong here? So there's that conveyor belt, which I can jump over. And then I can't go left on this one because I gotta crouch. So then I hit the, the button. Uh, <laughs> match again, the 127.0.0.0 slash 4. Oh, dude. Dude. So then, yeah, so then I hit the switch, I go left here. It doesn't go anywhere. And what's really weird is that I did this level three weeks back. I didn't have any problems with it. Why am I like blanking out now? That that could just be just in exclusively for coins, but I gotta be able to flip the switch somehow because I need to be able to go that away. So unless you break that, because you, I get oh, you just you just destroy these guys one at a time. I don't know why I thought you couldn't break destroy these guys. Yeah, no, like. That'd be kind of crazy, so... I wonder, like, what like what kinds of things you gotta do in order to, like, properly compete against IP. I think you probably gotta like fight it and then go back here and then. Is there something back for me here? Maybe it's these. No, it's just birds. It's just a lot of birds. Um. Oh, actually, hold on. Wait a minute. This goes down. Okay, okay. This level's actually also got a secret exit, so maybe I should like try and get that secret exit. Alright, we're going for the duck guy. We're going for the duck guy. Oh, I missed him. I'm hoping it was this guy. Nope. Nope. 
That's unfortunate. I might be able to cheese getting like 50 coins and then trying it again on hard. That's gonna be a bit of an interesting pain because it's like there's a couple of coins there and then I know I can get some coins just above. Uh, this one is a massive. Wish me luck. I've also got to flip the things around. Ah. Especially good if I don't lose all the, the coins on the way. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. Pop back down. Done. Drunk dogs. Am I right? Am I even gonna get this on hard? I don't even think I am, but it's worth a try. It's worth a try. <laughs> this is gonna be so horrendous. Hopefully it's like one of the first two I see. I might have seen it. I didn't. <laughs> oh, whoops. Alright, well how about let's go for the secret exit. It's not like I'm gonna have any money to do anything. That's just a breakable block. Take a huge guess why. I don't. I'm pretty sure, like... It just keeps going, like... This is a remarkable, like, just... Maze of doors. And then... Oh! A bat! Okay, you got a crusher. And then that's the secret door that you want to go down. this guy and then jump up the steps and then hopefully I've got the timing there we go oh I didn't get the treasure but I got a, I got an exit open the chest get on the chest everybody do the chest. So yeah, so that's a, that's a, wow, actually, I left both of these levels with the secret exits. Wow. Okay, cool. Alright, escape from the factory, yet again. Alright, <laughs> take two, take two. Yeah, but it's, it's still kind of weird that like, I mean, networking is magic, but it's also just like, there's a lot of like, bizarre things that are in it for some reason. Um, IP is a classic, TCP doing its ramp up, ramp down, like, uh, it works. Uh, probably, like, we're in the realm where, like, uh, yeah, a new protocol can come in and it shouldn't be too weird. Uh, Google's one looks, like, promising, it's just no one's implementing it except for them and their servers and Google Chrome. And that's okay, it's just yeah, like, I guess, how are people, or what, what is motivating people to adopt it? Uh, honestly, like, uh, actually, I'm curious how a file transmission, like, whether that's using other kinds of protocols now. It might. Because it's just like, I, I feel like TCP, like, if, uh, if you get, like, a packet, uh, issue or something like very like early on and then it's just like TCP is in that remarkably like slow state for a bit. HTTP? HTTP actually, yeah. But like, hey, does HTTP work over, um, UDP, right? I guess it's got autocorrection, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably it, just... Maple Star used to torrent it down. It, oh, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. That wouldn't surprise me at all. HTTP is over TCP. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. 
Cause like yeah, one thing with um HTTP is uh actually I don't I don't know. <laughs> I've not looked. It's been a while since I've done like my networking stuff. I swear. This is after working for a telco <laughs> as well. Um, we did everything in UDP. We didn't think about it. It was all SIP. Feel bad Australian internet is bad. You never end up a sweet. <laughs> yeah. All right, anyone for b-ball. So here's one last level, um, and a secret exit to, to, to boot. And that should put me in a wonderfully comfortable spot where there's 10 levels. Just gotta do the levels. And then, uh, we've got that wonderful bonus level to try and cram out. Overall though, like, I, I am really enjoying this game and it's actually great, like, playing it again. Just, like, all the wonderful things about it because it's a game, like, you don't have to... Warrior 3 is kind of like, you do have to think a bit too much, like, sometimes, like, there's some bizarre, like, puzzles. Like, you have to know that this switch you hit in this level activated this thing over in this level. And sometimes, like, they make it kind of okay clear, like, oh, like, this, this level changed. Uh, but, like, sometimes it's, like, also just... You have to be aware of a day-night cycle. This game, simple. Go on a level, level is a level. If you know what you're doing, you can find all the stuff. If you don't know what you're doing, you might not find your stuff. I have a feeling I was just here the whole time. Uh... Oh, oh now I need the enemy. Hi. And he's, he's bounced down for me, how kind of him. Oh. Bonk. Bonk. Alright, lots of good coins there. So now... I think I wondered, like, how to climb up there, and then I never really did. So many coins, wow. Alright, so there's the boss. I think that might be something if the boss uh, defeats me. Because he puts you on a high ledge and I kind of don't want to go up to the high ledge. Ah, get me, get me. Oh, he's got to jump on me, yeah. Bonk. This is such like a, a neat, fun boss. even got hard music. Oh, he just chucks it. Straight away. Oh. And to the top I go. Listen, I'd be shocked too if I just got slammed dunk three times in a row. Alright, so I'm up here. I... Yeah, okay. I could have just climbed up here. Cool. And then this was where I entered? It's lacking the coins. It literally is just above where I entered. Okay. So there's a door there with more... More coins. That is not over it. you can... Oh, okay. Okay. Through the door. Like this... <sighs> Get a bit thrown off by having the... Doors be open. Okay. And that... Hmm. Ah, there we go. I was like, I don't recall the platform being that high up. Oh. 
Ah. Oh, that looks like a that looks like a miraculous door. What what do you say? There we go. More treasure. Everyone loves more treasure. Give us the same game I've done. <laughs> How many times this stream? I swear, there's way too many treasures. All right, cloud, cloud, cloud. First one. Cool. Got it. All right. And then I'll run to get the secret exit, and that'll be a stream! The glasses. Maybe I need glasses. Who knows? And then... okay. So there must be something, like, past the... Uh, past the boss door, then. I think that's where it's hiding. Maybe at an enemy. Uh, blocks, because they've done that before where they're, they're not visible, but they're enemy blocks. Yep, they totally were. Did you do it twice? Maybe. At. Oops. At. <laughs> at. That should be good. There we go. Cool. End of the level. Easy money. Easy money. There we go. So we're happy. We've already gotten this. Alright, so there's ten more levels. There's ten more treasures. And there's ten more treasures. Uh, just the same thing twice. Uh, <laughs> So, that'll be good. I've already unlocked these bonus levels, but they lead to interesting new endings. Which, I love how out of, like, like, that first part, that first part just leads back on, and then this one leads back on unless you manage to find a secret level. So, that's that. That's all there is for this stream. So, with that, I would like to... There you go. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed this stream, I stream every Monday. I stream every... I upload the buzz to YouTube, so you can subscribe here or on YouTube, but that's about it. You just get told that there's new videos. That's cool. Uh, it was fun, yes. This game is great fun. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it's on the 3DS, so go out and get it. I don't know how much it costs. I'm gonna say like seven and a half bucks. Maybe less. Australian. So we'll see. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff uh, coming up ahead. There's one more stream left for January, because it's January 31st. Um, so be tuned, uh, because I'll bound to be finishing the game by then. Um, so that'll be good fun. Uh, other than that, I don't particularly have any other big announcements. Uh, keep safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late like I have, where it's 11.23pm, and you gotta wake up at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Whoops! Alright, to everyone at work, I'm sorry. 